Say extraordinary strategies, oh, extraordinary strategies. Oh, possibility, especially you will see that. incredible God you are the Alpha and Omega we worship you what would we have done without you we worship you blessed be your holy name breathe on your word this morning our ears are ready to hear from you Father, speak through me today. I decrease that you might increase. May I not be seen, but you be seen. May I not be heard, Lord, but you be heard. Cause a shift in our lives today. Cause a shift in our businesses today. Cause a shift in our jobs today let there be something remarkable that will happen to us thank you father in Jesus name we pray Praise the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. You're all welcome to today's service. Work on this. You're all welcome to today's service in the mighty name of Jesus. Today happens to be the first Sunday of our Super Sunday. I thought somebody would be excited more than this. Hallelujah. Yes, today happened to be the first Sunday of our Super Sundays. And um, it is our Super Sundays of shift. I am actually believing God to shift someone from this level now to the next level. In the name of Jesus. And just like our team, provoking divine remembrance. In these Super Sundays, 
we are going to be provoking God to remember us. AGNC shall be remembered. Amen. Every man, every woman, every boy, girl, child shall be remembered. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. I, I want you every Sunday to come with your expectations. Put your expectations. Today, today happened to be a double service. Double service in the sense that today happens to be our warfare service and the beginning of uh, the Super Sunday. So, we are going to pray. Talk to somebody, say, we are going to pray. I believe in prayers. Yes, we are going to pray. So, we are going to be preaching, praying. Uh, we are going to be preaching, praying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning, I want to be talking on the theme of the Super Sundays, which is provoking divine remembrance. Provoking divine remembrance. You know, things don't just happen. Things don't just happen. People must cause something to happen. Somebody must facilitate something to happen. Somebody must act as a catalyst for something to happen. Things don't just happen. Even through the scriptures, things don't just happen. There are people that are responsible for things that happen even through the scriptures. And so today, in our own generation, you shall be one of those people that will be causing something to happen. You are such person that will be causing something to happen that will be remarkable that people will always look back through and say, ah, it was when and so today your decision will decide your due date. Is somebody hearing me? Your decision today will decide what and when it's going to be. Hallelujah. I want to at this junction recognize our ministers of the gospel. Sirs and mass, I recognize you. I celebrate you all. You are well seated. God bless you. Thank you for coming to church today. I want to celebrate the pastoral themes. They are up there. Without them, things will not move. And uh, I celebrate you all. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you have your scriptures, let's open to First Samuel. First Samuel, chapter one. First Samuel chapter one. I'll read from verse nineteen. I'll read from verse okay, I will start from verse nine to nineteen, the ten verses there, from verse nine to nineteen. Can we rise on our feet as we read the scriptures? After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose now. Hannah rose. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed 
and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you would indeed look on the afflictions of your servant and remember me and remember me and not forget your servant but will give to your servant a son then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head as she continued praying before the Lord Eli observed her mouth Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only her lips moved and her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli took her to be a drunken woman. And Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, no, my Lord, I am woman. I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. But I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman. For all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you petition, grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worship before the Lord. Then they went back to their houses at uh, Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And the Lord remembered her. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. You may be seated. You can also put um, this down, 1 Samuel chapter 16, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11 to 35. 1 Samuel 16, 11 to 35. You can put that down. Hallelujah. Provoking divine remembrance. Provoking divine remembrance. And we say that there are things that happen, people cause things to happen. And things do not just happen like that. And if God must remember us, if God must remember us, then we must be able to do what? Provoke him to remember us. We must be able to do what? Provoke him. To provoke is to do what? Is to make, is to, you are like gingering someone. To provoke is to charge. To provoke, to charge someone, to ginger someone. And when we talk about divine, we are talking about God. And so when we say provoking divine, remember, you are saying, God, there is something I want to do. And that when I do it, you will remember me. That when you look at it, you will remember me. Because one of the reasons why people are not blessed is because they have not been able to provoke the hand of God upon their lives. God is blessing men.
men every day. God is releasing blessings every day. But he releases them on people that are able to draw his hand upon himself. I say, until you are able to draw the attention of God, God's eyes cannot be focused on your side. Until you are able to say, God, whether it be good or bad, this is what I want to do. This is who I am. This is what I want to do for you. Then, God will say, okay, you are ready for a blessing. And so this morning, I want to point out few things and few people from the scriptures that God remembered. What did they do? How did they make, provoke God to remember them? How did they provoke God? How do I provoke divine remembrance? How do I provoke God to remember me? Number one, number one, live a holy life. Live a holy life. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 1, that was the account of Noah. The Bible says, but God remembered Noah. God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the water subsided. See, God remembered in his days things happened. A lot of things happened. People were living lives anyhow. And God decided to do what? To destroy the earth. Now, when God looked at the whole earth, the only man he could find that was, that was living a life that he can reckon with was Noah. And today, the whole earth is, you know, emanated somehow now from Noah. Because God destroyed the earth. But because Noah found favor, Noah was living a life that God could reckon with. The question is, what kind of life are you living? Is your life worth reckoning with? Can someone be proud to say, or to be, to, to be connected to your life? Can God be proud to call you by your name? God remembered Noah for the kind of life and the way of life. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye holy. Be ye separate. But the question is, we are all in the midst of the people, the multitude. Nobody knows who is a Christian from who is not a Christian. In the school, we do the same thing that they do. In the business, we do the same thing that the, the, the world does. In our jobs, we do the same thing that the somebody comes to. In fact, yesterday, I received a shocking news of one of our big men that was in the government. That a man was telling me that, that when somebody went to him for business, the man told him, he said, look, before I will give you, you must drop three million naira. And then this is the man that will stand to represent assemblies of God in the government. You want to make fast money at all costs. At the expense of your Christianity. When you are out there, they know you as the world. When you come to church, we say lift up holy hands. You lift up your holy hands. In quotes. And then say, God remember me. How can God remember iniquity? God does not remember men in iniquity. He remembers people that are holy. People that distinct themselves. People that live a life that is separate. People that 
will say, I am no longer the part of the world. This is who I am. People that will not talk anyhow. Because when you say you are holy, you must keep your mouth. You know what to say and what not to say. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Let God and even the devil know that you are living a holy life. Do you know that in the days of Job, even the devil knew. Even the devil I preach a message. I, I taught a, a, you know, in a Bible study. I said, you are the Bible that your neighbor is reading. Your neighbor does not need to open up any Bible to read. You are the Bible that your neighbor is reading. The way of your life tells the neighbor whether you are a child of God or not. The way you live your life at home tells your parents, your father or your mother or your wife or your children whether you are a child of God or not. It is not saying it by mouth. No. If we must provoke the hand of God upon our lives, we must learn to do what live a holy life. And somebody lift up your hands and say, Father, help me Lord to live for you Father help me Lord to live a holy life in the mighty name of Jesus in 2 Chronicles chapter 16 verse, verse 9 it said for the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those who heart are blameless. God's eyes is moving everywhere to and fro, looking for those that their hearts are blameless. Those that have separated themselves. Not those that will say, I surrender some. May the grace to live a holy life rest upon you now in the mighty name of Jesus number two live a life of absolute worship praise and thanksgiving if you want the hand of God, if you want to draw and provoke God to remember you you must live a life of praise worship and thanksgiving Live a life of absolute worship, praise, and thanksgiving. David was such a man. The Bible said that God told David, he said, you are a man, he's a man after my heart. Not because he was not sinning, but because he knew how to please God. One of the best ways to please God is in our worship. I said it before, your fasting and praying does not move God. Somebody is shocked. You pray from now till tomorrow, it does not move God. If God wants to answer, he answers. If he does not want to answer, he leaves it and, ex and allow you to wait. But there is no man that worships God and God is not moved. When you worship God in spirit and in truth, you must draw God's attention to yourself. You must be able to provoke God into doing something. And I told us the story of the Oni of Ife. I told us. And that is exactly how God does it. When you worship him, he scoops out his blessings and releases them upon you. In Isaiah chapter 23, verse 16. In Isaiah 23 verse 16, it said, take a harp, go about the city, O forgotten prostitute, make sweet melody, sing many songs that you may be remembered. If you must be remembered, 
you must learn to sing songs of praise. You must learn to worship God. In Psalm 22 verse 3, he said, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabit the praise of his people. The praise of Israel. God inhabits the praise of his people. God is moved with our worship. In Matthew 26, verse 7 to 13, when you read it down, this is the account of the woman, you know, that came to Jesus with the alabaster box. She came and she decided to worship God, to worship Jesus with that her oil. It was expensive, yes. And that was the reason why it, it provoked Jesus to make a statement. She came to Jesus, wiped Jesus' feet with, his, with her tears. And after everything, anointed his feet with the oil of the alabaster box. And, and you, for, for the disciples to, to, re, to recall that it was expensive, will tell you how expensive that oil could be. And, and when Jesus saw that, um, is this woman, is she insane or is she doing the right thing? Breaking that one and then using it to clean the, the, the feet and everything. He made a statement in Matthew chapter 26 verse 13. He said, truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed, in the whole world, what she has done will also be told will also be told in memory of her anywhere in the world that this gospel is preached that that woman will be remembered nothing can clean her name from the book of remembrance the question is what have you done to God that will make God to speak of you that way. How can you provoke God to speaking of you that way? That God could say, wherever this name, or wherever this gospel shall be preached, that you, because of what you have done, that you have provoked him, and that wherever this gospel shall be preached, that your name, will be mentioned. A life of absolute worship, not worshiping God with your heart and then your legs is somewhere. Not saying it with your mouth, but your heart is somewhere else. I said it the other day. I said there are people that when they are worshiping, they are worshiping God. Yes, saying with, it, with their lips. But do you know that their heart is calculating the money? They don't know whether the change that woman gave to them in the market was correct. And, and they are trying to calculate it. And they are also worshipping God. When you are worshipping God, it must be with undivided attention. This woman absolutely... She was broken before Jesus. She was broken before Jesus. And today, we speak about her. If you want the heavens to be open over your life, be a rugged and a dogged worshiper. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Can you lift your hands to heaven and say, Father... I need your grace to be a true worshiper. Father, grace to be a true worshiper. In the mighty name of Jesus, may that grace be released upon you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, grace, that grace that will provoke the hand of God, that grace to worship God until God 
will rise from his throne and say, who is this my child that is disturbing me? What does he want? What does she want? That grace is released upon you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Grace to be a worshiper. Number three. Number three. Refuse to take no for an answer. Refuse to take no if you must provoke God into remembering you, into action. You must learn to say no. You must learn to take no for an answer. The account where we read in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 9 to 19. That was Hannah. Hannah was mocked by her co-wife. Penina, because she had no child. The Bible said that God closed her womb, not man. If you read it very well, say God closed her womb, probably for a particular purpose. And Elkana and, and, and Penina will always mock, You don't have a child. What are you coming with us to Shiloh to do? And Shiloh means a place of rest. How can you be at rest when you are embittered? How can you be at rest when your heart is not at rest? Is it possible for your body to be at rest when your heart is not at rest? And Hannah was constantly in pain. Because of what she has received from people. You may be here today. Parents may have told you, oh Lord, you have read and nothing is happening. How many times will you write exam? And the thing is not working. You better go and push barrow. Do you know that there are parents that talk to their children like that? Or maybe your case is that you don't have a child. And people have been mocking you and talking about you. Are you a man or a woman? You have graduated. Your parents spent a lot of money on you. To get a job and nothing is happening. You have looked for a job and nothing is happening. And then your parents are saying, I, I, is it that we have spent this money for nothing? I, I don't know what would have been your own case. For Hannah. Her case was that she had no child. And she was mocked. But one thing that Hannah did was to take no for an answer. Look, do you know that Ekanah had already settled for? Ekanah said, what is it that you need that I have not given to you? Am I not bigger or greater than ten sons put together? Forget about children. If God does not want to give you children, forget about it. If God does not want to give you the job, forget about it. If God does not want to give you a husband, forget about it. It is not a must that everybody must have children. It is not a must that everybody must have, you know, have a job. It is not a must. That may have been your own case. But to Hannah, Hannah said, no, I cannot settle for that. That is not what I am called for. The Bible said that we are fruitful vine, that there shall be no, no barren in the land. And I cannot be the number one person that will be the one that will lead the barrenness. And so when they went to Shiloh, Hannah will always, she went to the temple to pray. Why she was praying, Eli, that did not know what was happening, came and was talking. That does not bother Hannah because she was not ready to settle for a no. Somebody lift up your hands and say, I cannot settle for a no. I cannot settle for a no. I will not give up. 
That was the case of Hannah. Hannah will say, I, I believe God will say, okay, let's see how it's going to play out. And Hannah will stand and say, God, you will give me my own child. I need my own son. And then I believe God would have said, okay, what is the deal? Permit me to use these words. You know, say, what would be the deal? And Hannah would have said, okay, you know that Eli's children are having problems. Eli's children, Phineas and, Hophni, and, and uh, Hophni, they are not doing what they are supposed to do as priests. So what do I do at this time? Ah, okay, God, this is what we are going to do. Let's begin. Give me a son and then I will give you the desired priest. If you give me a son now, I give you the desired priest. If God gives you that job, what are you expecting to give to God? If God gives you the child, what, do you would, what would you do? I am provoking us to make sure we have a shift in life. If God would do it for you, what do you want to do for him? Hannah said, okay, give me a son and I will give you a desired priest. The one that will replace the children of Eli. What can you give? What would you offer if God were to give you that, ask you that question? It is not to say it with mouth as a promise. Because a lot of people have promised and nothing has happened. And then, when, when, when Hannah had said that, Give me a son and I will give back that son to you. That provokes God. You are giving me back that son. That means I am going to have another priest in place of, of the children of Eli. So that, so that the children of Israel can be blessed again. And then God would have gone through the mouth of Eli to speak. When Eli would have told Hannah, what are you doing? Why are you drunk? And she said, I am not drunk. I am only pouring my heart to God. He said, let it be unto you. Let it be unto you. Somebody I speak into your life today. Let it be unto you. According to your faith. Let it be unto you. Let it be unto to you even according to your faith it does not matter what men have said it does not matter what devil have said what God have said is what will come to pass who is it that said a thing and it comes to pass when the Lord have not ordained it the Lord has not ordained that you will be a barren woman the Lord has not ordained that you will not get that job the Lord have not ordained that you will not pass that exam the Lord have not ordained that you will not become what you want to become i speak into your life today by the reason of this seven super sunday by the reason of the word of god you are having a shift in your life in the name of jesus that shift is coming your way god will remember you just like he remembered Hannah. And after Eli spoke to her, the Bible says she was satisfied. She, her heart was gladdened and she went back and ate. And then the Bible says that Ekana knew her and the baby came. And the Bible says that she actually brought that baby to God. After that day, God released more children on her. Can you lift up your hands? And say, Father, I take no for an answer.
Can you rise on your feet this morning? In two minutes, we are going to talk to God this moment. Ah, Father, I would I take no for an answer. It is not what man has defined me to be that I am. It is not what man has said I am that I am. It is what God has said I am that I am. I cannot be less than what God has told me. I cannot be less than what God has said. Open up your mouth in one minute and declare to God. Hey, God has not said you will be barren. God has not said you, you cannot be fruitful. God has not said you cannot have a job. God has not declared it. No. And therefore, who is that devil? The devil is a bastard. Who is that devil that will say and it comes to pass when God have not ordained it I am taking no for an answer that it does not come does not mean it will not come it will surely come it will surely come it will surely come though it tarries wait for it though it tarries wait for it though it tarries wait for it though the promotion tarries wait for it the accepted time is now Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray may it be unto you even according to your faith in the name of Jesus number four if, if I don't finish next time we will continue is, is somebody hearing me because I, I don't think I will be able to finish it but number four be totally obedient to God in everything. Be totally obedient to God. If you must provoke God to remember you, you must learn to be totally obedient to him. And who can we talk about? The life of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, Verse 1 to 4. Say, now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your father's house. In fact, God told Abraham, Say, Leave your father's house. Abraham did not see God face to face. If you ask Abraham, How does God look like? He cannot tell you. He only heard the voice. And then he took action. How many of us will hear that voice and will, act, will actually take action? A lot of us have heard voices. Some of us even heard the voice of God. And because the voice of God seemed too, too difficult, you say, no, this cannot be the voice of God. I told a story in, in our Bible study about a man a multi-millionaire, a young man that was not married. And when he wanted to get married, God spoke to him and said, look, there is that woman, that young girl, very pretty girl, but she is sitting on the wheelchair. He said, that is your wife. He said, God forbid, that cannot be my wife. A promising man that everybody is looking out for. There is no woman, there is no young girl that wouldn't want that man to marry her. And then God is telling him, of all the elegant, bodied, you know, shaped ladies in the church, that it is that woman, that young girl on the wheelchair. He said, no. He went back to God. God showed, her, showed him again, that is the young girl. God went to the girl and told her, that young man is your husband. She called, she called her best friend and said, Look at what God is saying. And the best friend said, don't even mention it outside. Don't even, he said, even me, I am admiring that man. And then you on the wheelchair, 
you are saying this is what God is saying to you. It is not possible. Don't ever mention it. And when the trouble became too much, she, he, the, the young man went to the father, to the parents, and told the parents, I want to get married, but this is what God is saying. The parents said, you are not seeing, you, you didn't hear well. That is not the voice of God. That must be the voice of the devil. Our enemies are already at it. The blood of Jesus. But to cut the long story short, this man obeyed the voice of God and went to marry the girl. Did everything. On the wedding day, the man marched to the altar, stood at the altar waiting for the woman. They rolled her to the altar in her robe. And she, stood, she was there. The man of God came and did all the formalities. And then pronounced them. By the authority invested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. And immediately that husband and wife struck. Power came down. Power came down upon the young girl. And then power went through her head to the feet. And then the legs were shaking. And she stood up on the wheelchair. Stand elegant. Before the congregation. No sign of paralysis. This was because a man decided to obey the voice of God. The question is, what voice do you obey? Do you hear God speak to you? When you hear that voice, do you know, do you recognize whether it is the voice of God or the voice of man? Or the voice of the devil? When we obey God, we provoke his hand upon our lives. When we obey God, we provoke his blessings upon us. We provoke him to do the unthinkable. May your obedience provoke God on your side. May your obedience provoke God to stand for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, for, for time's sake, I want to go, I want to jump to I'll keep the balance for the next time. But the last one I want to talk about today, the last one, that will be what number? Number Number five. That would be number five. Learn to do dangerous sacrifice. Learn to do what? Dangerous sacrifices. If there is something that, that can draw the hand of God, that can provoke God into action, dangerous sacrifices. Dangerous sacrifices. And we see that in the life of King Solomon. King Solomon. Solomon provoked God to remember him with his dangerous sacrifice. Anything that does not cost you cannot move God. Anything, any sacrifice that does not cost you cannot move God. If it costs you and God knows that this one is painful to you, it must move God. A servant of God came to Transekulu and he he made a, pronounce, a pronouncement and uh, asked us to sow dangerous seeds. The amount he called two, two, two moons of my salary, then will not. But I decided to come out. Not because I have it, but I decided to come out. But the way God provides, you know, when you come out in such instances, 
Do you know what God would, God would provide that money? To know, and when God provides the money, sometimes he provides the exact money to know whether you, you can carry that exact money or you say, okay, let me pay some now. And then since I don't have money in my pocket, let me pay some now and then reserve it later. That later will never come. Solomon built a temple. Build the temple of the Lord. And after building the temple, he said, no, this is not enough. I need to sacrifice to pull down the hand of God upon this temple. He prayed prayers. Nothing was too big for Solomon to sacrifice unto God. In 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 62. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 62. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. Solomon offered as peace offering to the Lord 22,000 oxen. 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. The same day, the king consecrated the middle of the courts that was before the house of the Lord. For there, for there, he offered the burnt offerings and the grain offerings. In other words, the grain offering was a different one. It was not part of the oxen and the sheep. Now, let us go down. 65. So, Solomon held the feast at that time and all Israel with him. A great assembly from Lebo, Lebo Hamath, to the brook of Egypt before the Lord our God. Seven days. The people were busy killing for seven days. Killing the animals for sacrifice. Sacrificing for seven days. Now, I say, take, take note of this. Look at 22 oxen, 22,000 oxen. Let's just use 50,000 naira for one oxen. Multiply 50,000 by 22,000. That will give you about 1.1 billion naira. 1.1 billion naira. Now, 120,000 sheep at just 25,000 naira. Eh? At just 25,000 naira. That will give you not less than 2.4 billion naira. Add the two of them together. That will give you about 3.5 billion naira. Minimum. That somebody carried and then as a sacrifice to God. And say, God, you are too big. If there is anything that I have to give, this is a little thing that I can offer. God, take this. The question, what have you offered to God that have made you to brag? This is somebody that offered not less than three point something billion to God. In one sitting, excluding the grain offering that we cannot, we don't know how, how, how much that cost. Let me ask a question. If God comes to AGNC today, what can he pinpoint that you have done for him to remember you for? If God wants to remember you, what can he look at and say, this pin 
is provided by my servant. And because of this, after, after that sacrifice, Solomon, Solomon prayed prayers. He said, God, if anyone is sick and he comes to this temple, that sickness may it never remain. If anyone is being chased and he comes to this temple, may he be saved. And God is saying, whatever you give to him, it stands as a memorial to him. That when men are looking to destroy you, and he sees that memorial, he said, I cannot, you are not killable. Because sacrifices draws the hand of God. In 1 Kings chapter 9 verse 1, he said, as soon as Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's, king's house and all that Solomon desired to build, the Lord appeared. After the sacrifice, after the building, see, the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he had appeared to him in Gilbert. And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayers and your pleas. I have heard your prayers and your pleas, which you have made before me. I have consecrated this house that you have built by putting my name there forever. God is saying, because of what you have done, I have decided to look at you forever. I have decided to concentrate on you. That no man can destroy you. I have decided to remember. If God decides to remember you, what again are you looking for? What again becomes your challenge? If God remembers you, favor has located you. If God remembers you, you know, is it finance, finance have located you? If God remembers you, your desired husband have located you. If God remembers you, the, the, the pleas of your heart becomes your manifestations. When God decides to remember you, may the Lord remember you today. May the Lord remember you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will stop here because I will reserve the other one for next, for another Sunday. For another Sunday. Can we rise on our feet? One of the first steps God remembering you is your life to God. If your life is not concentrated, if you cannot concentrate your life to God, God cannot remember you. And you are here today by the reason of this program today. And you are saying, God, I want to rededicate my life to you. God, I want to give my life over to you. Can you lift up your hands wherever you are? That is the number one step. God does not remember. Before I will remember you, it means we have met before. Abi. We have met before and then I left and then probably forgot you. And then one day I remember you. I picked up a phone and called you and said, ah, he said, ah, you remember me today? Yes, I remember you. But I cannot pick up my phone and call somebody that I don't even have his number, that I don't even know. On a meme. It doesn't work that way. And so, 
probably God, you know God before and something has taken you away from him. The case of this life has taken you away from him and you're saying, Father, I want to return back to you or you have not even known him at all and you say, God, I want to give my life over to you. I want to give my life over to you. I want to be born again. Lift up your hands. You want to dedicate your life? You want to rededicate your life to God? Or you want to give your life over to God afresh? Lift up your hands. If you are not ashamed, come to the front. I want to pray with you. If you are lifting up your hands, come to the front. Come. Be bold enough to come. Imarama If church dismissed now, I believe God is happy. Ikado shalabada. Malikado shintala ba yagada labado. Imarama, you are seated on the throne. Imarama, Imarama. You are yagada labado shaka yagada labada labado. I want you to know that you have done the best thing that you can do in life. Bible say, when you are not ashamed of me before men, I can never be ashamed of you. There is nothing you would desire in this life that I cannot do for you. But when you are ashamed of me, and you cannot come out because you fear that men will look at me and say, ah, is this one, this one, this one wants to, wants to rededicate his life. Does that mean he has been fornicating? Does that mean he has been stealing? And because of that, you are ashamed to come before God. God will be ashamed of you before man. May he never be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to give a count of seven. And you are still there. You want to say, God, I want to rededicate my life to you. I want to surrender my life to you. You better come immediately before we pray. Number one. Shikaya Kadalabadosha. Imarama. You are Imarama. Number two. Number three. Number four. You are seated on the throne. Number five. You are seated on the throne. Don't be the last person to come out. Be the first to come. Number six. Can you lift your hands to heaven and begin to talk to God? Lift your hands to heaven and begin to talk to God. Say, Father, I am before your throne of grace. There is no person, there is nobody I can run to. I have run to you now. I am before your throne of grace now. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon my life. Have mercy upon me. 
Wash me with your blood today. Cleanse me, oh God. I surrender my life totally unto you. I want to obey you from the bottom of my heart. I want to do your will. I want to do your will. Lift up your voice and talk to God. And you that are out there, can you stretch forth your hands to us and begin to pray for these ones today. They have taken the best decision of their lives today. And their lives can never remain the same. If the program ends today, I I believe that God is happy. God is happy. The Bible says, I am happy. Well, one soul that comes to me. Somebody lift up your voice. God wants to come upon this one. The Holy Ghost wants to come upon this one. Oh, Jesus. You that are in front, can you lift your hands and say this after me? Say, Father, let me hear your voice say, it. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word to me today. I have heard your voice, I have heard your word. And I have answered to in obedience to your word. God, have mercy. Because of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, the blood that was shed for me, have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my trespasses. From today, I will do your will. From today, I will no longer go back. From today, you are my God. I believe with my heart and I confess today that Jesus died for my sins. That he shed his blood for my sins. And I receive him into my heart today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Can you lift these hands to heaven? Father, look at these ones today. They have not come before any man. They have come before you. The God that searches the heart. The God that cleans our sins. By the blood, by the washing of the blood. Father, wash them today by the blood of Jesus let their names be erased from the book of death let it be written from now in the book of life in the name of Jesus by the reason of their obedience to you to come to the altar father may you look unto them may you remember them Lord remember them today in the name of Jesus Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Church, can we rise on our feet now? This is the essence of the program. This is the essence of the program. God said, I am happy when one, just one soul, just one soul. If the super Sunday ends today, I think I will be happy. Wherever you are, church, can you come to the front? Can you come to the altar? I don't, I just, I just don't want. Malagado Fresh on me in Talagabado, she tired Jesus. For a friend, in Talagado, she kayagada labada labada. Break me, mold me, renew me, and use me. Spirit of the living God, this word for a fresh on me. Can you lift your hands to heaven 
and say, Father, I need your grace to live a holy life. The world is so perverse. The world is in, in, is, is in shambles right now. No one can do that by himself. You need God. You need God. You need to live a life that is that God can reckon with. Can you lift up your voice in earnest and say, Father, grace to live a holy life. Release your grace upon my release your grace upon my life the grace to live for you the grace not to go back the grace not to go back the world will soon come to an end what will be your end what will be your end if the world comes to an end if the world is rattled what will become of you today can you open up your mouth and come to God Father grace Father grace Father grace God has grace to live for you. Grace to live for you. Grace to live for you. Lift up your voice. Grace to live for you. 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 I refuse to say no to the devil. I refuse to say to the devil. Righteousness. Grace to live for you. God, let that grace be released today. Release your grace upon my life. Release your grace upon my family. Release your grace upon my life. If there is anything that you need, it is the grace of God to survive. It is the grace of God to live for Him. You cannot do that on your own. By your strength, you cannot prevail. You cannot prevail by your strength. You cannot prevail by yourself. You need a grace to prevail. You need a grace to live for God. You need a grace to live for God. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, Jesus name we pray I, I want you to take this prayer very serious. It's true that we are not going to spend enough time today like we spent it before. But I want you to take it very serious. I say, Father, 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 make me a rocket worshiper. Make me a rocket worshiper. Father, Father, make me a worshiper indeed. Make me a worshiper indeed. That will draw your attention on my life. That will draw your attention on my life. Open up your mouth and talk to God. Make me a rocket worshiper. Grace to be a worshiper. Make me a worshiper. The worshiper that will draw your hand. For the worshiper that will bring down your hand. Make me a worshiper. I receive the grace to be a rocket worshiper. I receive the grace to be a worshiper. To be a worshiper. To be a worshiper. Grace to be a worshiper. Grace to draw your hand. Grace, <laughs> 
lift up your right hand and say after me, my father, my father, my father, my father, whatever the devil has done, whatever the devil has done, that is fighting my destiny, inside my destiny, that is fighting my life, fighting my life, father, today, father, today, that embargo is lifted, that embargo is lifted, that embargo is lifted, that embargo is lifted, that cause is broken, that cause is broken, by the reason of the presence of God, by the reason of the presence of God, let every embargo be lifted, let every embargo be lifted, let every cause be broken, let every cause be broken, now, now, lift up your voice, Seven super Sundays. By the reason of the seven super Sundays, I receive divine shift. I receive divine shift. I receive divine shift. I receive it in my life. I receive it in my. I receive it in my family. I receive it in my. I receive it in my job. I receive it in. I receive it in my business. I receive it in my. I receive it in my education. I receive it in my. I receive it in my marriage. I receive it in my. Whatever my hand find to do, let there be a divine. I shift. Let that open up your mouth and talk to God. By the reason of this seven super Sunday, there will be a divine shift. Shift in my life. Shift in my marriage. Shift in my marriage. Shift in my life. 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 Shift to the left. Shift forward. In the dark, in the shadow, in the dark, 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 in the distribution of your blessings, in the distribution of your blessings, Father, remember me. Father, remember me. Father, 
Remember me. Remember me. Remember my family. Remember my family. Remember my children. Wherever they are, you are going to be calling your name of your children one after the other. You are going to be calling their names. You are going to be talking to God and say, Father, remember me. Open up your mouth. Talk to God. Father, remember me. Remember my wife. Remember my children. Remember them today. Remember me, Lord. The Bible says. Say, God remembered Noah. God remembered Sarah. God remembered Richard. God remembered Abraham. God that remembered Isaac. Remember me today. Remember me today. Remember me today. Remember my children today. Remember my wife today. Remember them today. Remember AGNC. Remember AGNC. Remember the children. Remember the men. Remember the women. Remember the boys. Remember the girls. Liga baga ishaga ya gada la. Shaba dala bada la bado. Enta la gaya gada la bada la bado. Mada la gasha tala. Isuparata sata. Wada do shada bada. Ela bado shada bada. Ela bado bada kote kado. In Jesus' name we pray. There, there is just one prayer that is that is just lingering in my heart. I wanted to stop, but that prayer is lingering in my heart. And the prayer is, Father, I will not suffer what my parents suffered. A little I, I don't know what your parents suffered in life. I don't know what your great grandparents suffered in life. I don't know what was their ordeal in life. But I am breaking my connection from that roof. I will not suffer what my parents suffer in life. Open up your mouth and talk to God. Shut up. That sickness they suffered, I will not suffer it. My children will not suffer it. I will not suffer what my family, my parents suffer their life. What my great grandparents suffer, I will not suffer it. Whatever they did that made them suffer, I will not suffer it. Oh, 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 oh,
it is your time to speak, Lord. It is your time to silence the devil. It is your time to speak, Lord. Father, we thank you. Hey, can you lift those hands to heaven? Can you lift those hands to heaven? Can we just maintain silence? Let's give it silence worship, a worship of silence. Can someone whisper the name Jesus? Again. Jesus. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. Can you whisper that name Jesus? Every name, every no. man that enters into that name is safe. Can you just whisper that name again, Jesus? Somebody call that name Jesus. There is power in that name, the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there is healing in the name, Jesus, Jesus, there is healing in the name, Jesus. There is healing in your name, Jesus, Jesus, there is healing in your name, Jesus, there is healing.
they are not lifted unto me they are not lifted unto any man they are not lifted unto the church they are lifted unto the name that is above every other name they are lifted unto the name the king of kings they are lifted unto the name that destroys every mountain I therefore lift them unto you, O oh God. Cause a shift in these lives. In the name of Jesus, let there be a shift, O oh God. Let there be a divine shift, Lord. When you stand with a man, that man will stand forever. When you stand with a man, nothing shall be lacking in that life. Father, stand with these ones. In their families, stand with them. In their jobs, stand with them. In their businesses, stand with them. In their marriages, stand with them. In their education, stand with them. In whatever they do in life, oh God, because they are standing in your presence. Elijah said, before that God of heaven whom I stand. Father, they stand before you. May you stand before them. In the name of Jesus. Father, I believe today they have provoked you. May you remember them. Remember that family. Remember that home. Remember that man. Remember that woman. Remember that boy, that girl. Remember all the children. In the name of Jesus. Father, cause a tremendous shift. A shift, oh God, that men will come to ask, what did you do? Favor their lives. May the Lord Almighty favor you. May the Lord Almighty favor you. May the Lord Almighty shine his face on you. In the name of Jesus. Just like he remembered Hannah. Is there anyone that is fruitless? By the reason of your word today, that child is released. By this time next year, we shall dedicate that baby. I call it done in the name of Jesus. Before the seven super Sundays will end, that pregnancy is confirmed. In the name 
of Jesus. Before these seven super Sundays will elapse, they will look for that sickness and they will not see it again. In the name of Jesus. It will not be long from now. You shall receive your own job. That promotion that is long due, I provoke it to come out. I provoke that, that promotion to locate you. To locate you, to locate you, to locate you. In the name of Jesus, as many as are due for promotion, as many as are waiting for their promotion, as many as are writing their exams for promotion, I call it done. In the name of Jesus, I declare upon your lives today, what killed your parents will not kill you. Whatever your parents suffered in the past, either as a result of what they committed, and the sin wants to come upon the children and the children's children. Father, we disconnect ourselves today. I disconnect your church today. I disconnect these ones today. In the name of Jesus. From henceforth, whatever your hands find to do, it shall be blessed. If there is any one person that is due for promotion or that even if you are not qualified by the reason of your being here today I qualify you. I qualify you. I qualify you. In the name of Jesus. Father we give you all the glory. I declare once more there shall be no losses. There shall be no loss of life. There shall be no loss of property. There shall be no loss of jobs. There shall be no loss of children. If you are in, it will not crash. If it will crash, you will not enter. I said, if you are in, it will not crash. If it will crash, you will not enter. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your awesome presence. We give you praise and glory. Now and forever. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Let me hear three thunderous Amen. Amen.